What's up everyone, Dabblade here with a shinobi guide to Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. In this episode we're going to be going over the location of all the shinobi prosthetics available to players in the game. Now we're not going to be going too much into details about the various prosthetic tool upgrades, we're just going to be going over how to find the base version of each prosthetic as well as its basic use. So, first of all, the first prosthetic you're going to be finding is the Loaded Shuriken. This is a straightforward prosthetic tool that allows Sekiro to fire off a small projectile at opponents, interrupting them and hitting them from afar. Now, to get the Loaded Shuriken, you have to find the Shuriken Wheel. This can be looted from a corpse found in the Ashina outskirts. But how do you get it? Well, first you have to go to the Gate Path Idol. From here, if you look straight ahead of you, you'll see a building with two grapple points. Inside this building is the Shuriken Wheel. So grapple over, drop down through the roof or via the hole in the wall and grab the Shuriken Wheel from the corpse. Once you have it, return to the sculptor and he'll apply it to your prosthetic arm. Anyway, the next prosthetic tool you'll find is the Shinobi Firecracker. This allows Sekiro to unleash an arc of firecrackers directly in front of him, blinding enemy opponents, stunning them for a short time and dealing posture damage to beast type enemies. But how do you find it? Well, you need to get the Robert's Firecrackers item. This is actually quite easy. You can purchase it from merchants. The Battlefield Memorial mob located in the Ashina outskirts sells the item for 500 sen. Again, from the Gate Path Idol, just follow the route in this video and you'll be able to get to the vendor. Afterwards, just purchase the Firecracker and have the Sculptor apply it to your prosthetic arm. Anyway, next is the Flame Vent. This allows Sekiro to deal fire damage to enemies via a short range fire blast. This will also inflict the burn status on opponents. It also deals bonus damage in that to enemies who have red eyes, such as the Chained Ogre. But how do you find this? Well, you need to obtain the Flame Barrel. This can be found in the Harata Estates. First of all, go to the Estates Path Idol and flank around the right of the camp. Eventually, you'll see a large group of thieves and the Flame Barrel is located pretty much on the campfire they're sitting around. So. Defeat them, loot it, and then return to the sculptor to apply it to your prosthetic arm. Anyway, the next prosthetic you'll find is the loaded axe. This is found fairly close to the flame vent prosthetic tool, so it's located in the Hirata Estates. This loaded axe allows Sekiro to deal heavy hits with this weapon. This can destroy most enemy shields, as well as deal a decent amount of posture damage. But how do you get it? Well, as you're making your way through the Hirata Estates, from the Estates Path Idol, you'll eventually come across a bunch of houses. From the Idol, it's located in the grounds of the first house on your right. So scale the house, eavesdrop on the enemies below, and they'll indicate that there's something in the temple. Dispatch the enemies, loot the temple, and you'll find the Shinobi Axe of the Monkey. Take this to the Sculptor, and he'll apply the loaded axe to your prosthetic. Anyway, the next prosthetic tool is the Mr. Raven. This is a strange prosthetic that allows Sekiro to assume a stance just before he is attacked, and then once the attack lands, Sekiro will disappear and move directly away from your opponent in the direction you're pressing. If you're pressing no direction, you'll just appear above your enemy instead. So it's an evasion-based prosthetic at all, but how do you get it? Well, once again, it's located in the Hirata Estate. From the Bamboo Thicket Slope Idol, make your way as soon as you can to the lake that is located to the left of the idol. From here, swim directly forward and underneath the bridge. You'll be able to grapple up to an area with bamboo and items, and there'll be a wall you can double jump all the way to the top. Anyway, once you reach there, there'll be a temple in front of you and a very hard enemy. You can completely avoid this enemy if you want and just go for the item, which is what I did the first time I did it. So just distract the enemy using firecrackers or whatever, run to the door, open it, loot the Mist Raven's feathers, which is what is required for this prosthetic tool, and return to the sculptor to apply it to your prosthetic. Anyway, the next prosthetic tool is the Loaded Spear. This is a tool that allows Sekiro to reach far away enemies with a frosting attack. Lighter enemies who are actually hit by this will be dragged towards Sekiro. But how do you get this item? Well, you need to obtain the Gilbul's Broken Horn, found in the Yashino Reservoir. It's located in a treasure box in the gatehouse. Now, players will have to acquire the gatehouse key to unlock it first. Well, the gatehouse key can be found in two areas, depending how far you've got through the game. First, from the Ashina Castle Idol, which is what most players should be approaching. The key is found when you eavesdrop on a couple of enemies located here in the video, and then afterwards defeat them. They should drop the key upon their death. If not though, if you progressed far enough through the game, it can actually be found by taking a left before the staircase leading towards the castle front doors and there'll be a bag containing the key next to a dead spearman behind some wooden barriers. 
Once you have the key, make your way again to the Ashina Reservoir, and from there, head to your left, and then grapple again to your right, using the trees and approaching the area in front of you. The house directly in front of you, past the enemies, contains the Broken Horn. But be careful, as there are a lot of enemies around here, and ones who can alert the other enemies in the area too. But once you have it, take it back to the Sculptor, and he'll apply it to your prosthetic limb. Anyway, the next prosthetic tool is the Loaded Umbrella. This is a tool that pretty much functions like a shield, allowing players to deploy the umbrella to block incoming attacks to the point they can even hold down the button to keep the shield constantly up. But how do you get the loaded umbrella? Well, first you have to find the Iron Fortress material. This can be purchased from the Black Hat Badger in Ashina Castle. To get to him, go to the Old Grave Idol and then drop down to the left of it onto the house below and there'll be a hole in the rooftop. Here you'll find the Black Hat Badger. Be aware though that you can only really get to him after defeating the Blazing Ball and attaining access to Ashina Castle. Once you purchase the item, which is quite expensive, just take it back to the Sculptor and he'll apply it to your prosthetic arm. The next prosthetic tool is the Sabimaru. This is a short blade attached to your prosthetic arm, allowing you to deal poison attacks to an enemy. It can also be used in conjunction with your main weapon to perform long combo strings. But how do you find it? Well, it's found in Ashina Castle. First of all, from the antechamber idol, you will find a room that is patrolled by one old woman and two blue samurai. Instead of taking them on, simply jump over the ledge and down to the ground. Obviously it is a far fall, so there is a beam you can grapple to to make the descent easier. Anyway, once you reach the floor, you'll have to contend with another blue samurai as well as three weaker enemies. After you defeat them, open the door the blue samurai was standing in front of and you'll be able to collect the Sabi Maru. After you have it, take it back to the sculptor and he'll apply it to your prosthetic arm. Anyway, the next prosthetic tool is the Divine Abduction. This is a funny tool that allows you to gather and release gusts of wind, forcing enemies caught by it to be turned around in confusion. It is also used in various side quests, but we're not going to go into that here. When in combat to use the tool, you have to press RT or R2 to gather the vortex around you, and afterwards, you press it again to release the winds, making them face the opposite direction. This gives you an opportunity to retreat for cover, go back into stealth, or potentially perform death blows on them. But anyway, where do you find them? Well, first of all, you have to get access to the Gunfort Idol in the Sunken Valley. Just follow the direction I've been doing on screen and you'll be able to find the Divine Abduction. But be aware you'll have to contend with a boss. The long armed centipede giraffe blocks the way to the large fan item required for the Divine Abduction. Using firecrackers or the fistful of ash item can help deal with this boss, but so long as you're on the ball with your deflections, it's not the toughest one out there. Anyway, once you defeat him, loot the item near the statue to collect the large fan. Afterwards, take it back to the sculptor and he'll apply it to your prosthetic arm. And then finally, the last prosthetic tool available to Sekiro is the finger whistle. This is a strange tool that allows Sekiro to cause a berserk status on beast enemies, making them attack anyone, friend or foe. If not used on beasts, then the whistle can also be used to distract normal human enemies in the same way as the ceramic shards. But how do you get this? Well, the item for the finger whistle is the slender finger, and you find this by defeating the guardian ape in the Sunken Valley. After you've defeated this boss, it will be part of the loot you collect at the end of it, to which you take back to the sculptor, and he'll apply it to your prosthetic arm. Of course, taking on the guardian ape for the first time isn't the easiest boss to take down. You can use firecrackers during its beast form to help stun it, and during its second phase, you can use the divine confetti consumable item to help deal bonus damage to the Guardian Ape as its classification changes from Beast to Apparition. Be aware in its second form the Firecrackers won't work at all so it is best to use the Loaded Spear as you can deal high posture damage to the Guardian Ape should you be able to knock it down and then use the spear on its neck. So there we have it, those are the location of all the prosthetic tools in the game. Of course this is just the base version of the prosthetic tools as all of these can be upgraded which gives them additional effects and makes them far more potent. But I'll be going in depth into each prosthetic, going over their talent trees as well as their links to the prosthetic skill tree in videos dedicated to each prosthetic tool. But until then, I hope you found this video helpful and until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you a shinobi guide to all the prosthetic locations in Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.